So basically my goal today is to talk about the different growth stages in aqua farming and how to mix the, uh, all the different solutions that you've made into kind of these ready-made quick mixes because um, that was Kim's suggestion for what to do today. And I thought it was a good idea. Um, so this this diagram has been on naturalfarminghawaii.net for a while. Uh, and it's just this chart that um, these over here on this column, these are the different solutions, the acronyms for them. Um, and then I kind of wrote a reason. Like, for instance, if you're using oriental herbal nutrient, um, you'd be using it because it acts as kind of like a medicine. Um, so all these, like the fermented fruit juice, acts as nutrition or food for it. And then this column right here is the standard dilution of how much you would put in. And then what I did is I put these different stages here. So we start with uh, soil preparation and seed soak. The next one is the leaf growth. Next is the flower, root flower and structure. And the third one over here is fruit, seed, and reproduction. So I kind of, if you follow Master Cho's things, he'll call these like type two, type three. And I find that that's kind of confusing because type two uh, doesn't, you know, it just means type two. So it's hard to understand what that means. But if I call it instead leaf and growth um, or type two, that kind of gives you an idea. If I say use leaf and growth and then the root structure, leaf and growth, root structure, that gives you a lot of idea, better idea instead of type two, type three, type two, type three. So I sort of uh, translated a little bit of this that way. So. Um, to go back, you'll have to figure that out. But essentially, um, what you'll see across here is that in each of these, they all include OHN, they all include BRB, and the majority of them, they all include FPJ or a fruit juice. Then, as you go down into the lower parts, um, you'll find that it's kind of differentiated out between whether it includes fish amino acid, water-soluble calcium phosphate, or water-soluble calcium. So this is the general table. I just want you to go look at this. This is right on um, naturalfarminghawaii.net. Um, and that table you can refer back to. But I actually made a presentation a little while ago. Yeah, go for it. When you go back to that table, where it says 4 milliliters, 8 milliliters, what does that mean? So that's how many milliliters you put per gallon. Okay, per gallon. So I just, I try to, sometimes people ask how much do I put in per gallon. Okay. That's, I just try to make it easy. So, um, so the plant nutritive cycle is pretty simple. Um, and this is just a slight disclaimer that says, um, Basically, if you start messing around with different plant nutrient cycles at the wrong time and your plant is not ready for that, um, you can, for instance, if you apply too much fish amino acid at the wrong time, you can have overgrowth and cause weakness in your plant. So basically, it's talking about if you don't know what you're doing, just stick with this general recipe right here, which is to put in your medicine, the oriental article nutrient, the vinegar, which the vinegar, what it helps to do is to flush anything. So in any situation, if you have a bunch of um, nutrients that are bound up in the plant, the, and you apply the vinegar, it will help to like free up those nutrients. So now your plant is ready to accept um, new nutrition. And it helps to flush things through. And then fermented plant juice is always a good general feed. So this is the common denominator of every recipe is this recipe right here. And if you just use this anytime your plant looks hungry, use this <coughs> recipe, you can't really go wrong. You can't use it at the wrong stage. You can't use it at the wrong thing. It's always, the medicine is always good because it always helps to promote the beneficial microbes, get rid of the pathogens. The BRB helps it to flush and the fermented plant juice is like a general nutrient to your plant. 
just like we gotta eat, so do the plants. So if you're putting that on um, a couple times a week or a week, once a week, you should be fine. Um, make sure you bring your dog with you. <laughs> um, so in general, the, the, the stages are the seed soak, where you're starting with your seeds before they're attached. Then you go through um, first leaf growth usually. Um, that's when the first codlins come out. You're trying to get a bunch of early leaf growth. Um, then, then including um, the flower and structure and root growth. Then once your plant is kind of, you alternate between these two, which I'll go over. And then once your plant starts to reproduce and then actually starts to put fruit, um, some you know things like lettuce aren't obviously aren't going to go that far, but things start to put out fruit. And you'd switch to your reproductive right, um, spray. And then right when your fruit is about two weeks before you're going to harvest it, you can use an enhanced ripening spray and make your fruit even super sweeter. Um, so starting with the seed soak. Um, this is what it helps to do. Um, essentially, what why the seed soak is um, valuable is because it will coat your entire plant surface with microbes. So in that is included lactic acid bacteria as well as um, IMOs. And when you put that on the plant surface, then as it grows up and gets bigger and bigger, it's always having those microbes coated on its, on its surface. And this can help from other pathogens landing or, um, or leak die off where you have um, like some kind of fungus will just kill your plant early. This will help because it's already coated. Um, and today, um, Master Cho always talks about how we have wheat seeds. And their use, um, the seeds actually used to be with the plant when it um, was ripe. It was coated in microbes, so then the seeds still had microbes in it. But today we like sterilize everything, we spray it all, and you're getting it from a farm that's probably sprayed. So all those microbes that would have been in the seeds are gone. So this seed soak really helps to cope. And that's when he talks about wheat seeds, it's the microbes inside the seed that go from generation to generation to generation are killed. So if you start with a seed soak, you can put that back and get your um, wheat seeds out of there. Um, the next the next part after your seeds start to sprout is your leaf and growth and the way I like to think of this part of the recipe is um, putting on solar panels and meat and leaves so if you look at the picture I picked here I picked this big guy cartoon beetle looking guy um, and really what it is is it's the maintenance spray, so it's that original OHN plus that, and then fish amino acids. And amino acids are essential for creating DNA. Amino acids are the building blocks of life. And when a plant is first sprouting, it can't necessarily provide all of its own amino acids. So if you add the maintenance spray plus fish amino acid, you're getting all these building blocks for DNA to really help the plant. And it tends to put on real fast, lush, um, meaty type of growth. Um, and as, as your plants age, they start to produce their own amino acids as they start to grow up. And then they don't need this as much. But in the beginning, um, adding fish amino acid into your maintenance spray is pretty essential. Um, if you overuse this, it makes your plants um, soft and susceptible to pests. So the, the leaf structure will get too soft and the bugs will start eating. So if you look out and you see a whole bunch of bug damage where they're biting your um, plants, and sometimes that'll happen after rain, it's because you've got too much uh, nitrogen or amino acids out there and starting to look like this guy, which is not necessarily the healthiest guy. But you might be that happy with that. <laughs> um, so overuse can make your plant susceptible if, you, if you're if using this at the wrong time. Um, the counter to this is this guy. And these, these two recipes, this one and this one, work in 
um, they balance each other out. So if you've gone too far towards making your plant um, too lush and um, meaty, then you can apply the maintenance spray plus the calphos, some calcium phosphate, and it'll cause your plant to do this sort of action. It'll get tall, skinny, and lanky. So if your plants are too tall, skinny, and lanky, then you need to feed them more amino acids, and these two balance each other out that way. Um, and it, you know, thought, thought of making the bones and the structure. So again, your plant, if they're too soft from too much amino acid, you start to use this, it'll start to harden the uh, plant tissue so the bugs won't want to eat it as much. Um, this also helps to transfer the energy collected in the solar panels into the structure in, in growing roots and flowers. So when your plant is starting to flower, this recipe also helps to transfer. You know, you've got a nice meaty growth. Um, just kind of like ladies, you know, like, like Master Cho would explain this using women, of course. Um, try to be a little less crude. Um, but, yeah. But, you know, like a lady puts on some weight, but as she's growing the baby inside, at least I've noticed this with my pigs. You know, you try to get the pig real nice, big and supple, but then as it's starting to give birth, it starts to kind of get a little skinny because it's using the energy to um, build itself. And then also when they start nursing, they use a lot of that energy. And so this energy structure, the calphos helps that transfer of the going from the meat from the, the lady into the offspring. So it's the same thing where your plant is putting out flowers, it's starting to go into that reproductive type of idea. And um, if, again, if you overuse this, you'll stretch your plants out and they'll be too spindly. So they're looking real like, you know. <laughs> um, so, and then the third, the third growth stage is um, is when your plant, after the little uh, starting to put fruits on, it's it then needs the calcium, and calcium again helps that transfer more than just to the flowers. It helps to translate. Um, it, it changes carbohydrates into sugars. Calcium helps to facilitate that. So as your plant put out collected all its carbohydrates from growing. It then helps to translate these things into fruits and sugars, and that's what you want in your new um, plant. So that's kind of an um, overview of those three, and then again, just to balance these things out, it, you, you want to basically alternate between the fish amino acid that you're adding and the water-soluble calcium that you're adding. This is the calcium phosphate. And if you're balancing and you're going between these two with your plants, you'll eventually end up like this dude who's somewhat balanced. <laughs> and that's the general theory on this. And um, when to notice and when to see it is a little bit tricky. Um, I was really, um, last time here in Korea, Master Cho spent about two hours literally telling us about this exact thing of how do you know when to start using one or the other? But the more you start to get to know your plant, and if you start to notice these types of things in your plant, these characteristics, these two like body types you're seeing, it'll start to be obvious. And a little bit before your plant is going to like start switch to being flowering, you want to start to already apply this. If you want to somewhat ease your plant into it. So as the plant is already starting to naturally, you know, and you know it's going to flower in the next week, you start applying calphos. In, in the case of a fruit tree, it's more pronounced. Something like a tomato, which is always going back and forth, you just kind of alternate between. Um, but you want to kind of catch it a little bit before and ease it. That way the nutrition is already there. It's already helping the plant to transition. And the most important part in the um, transition is actually going this this was a teenager looking guy this lady was about and then that lady's pregnant kind of cut off my screen a little bit um, is the morning sickness 
is the most crucial. Because sometimes people will grow these huge ginormous trees, but then they won't put out good fruit. And it's it's this transition here of the calfos and the sour foods that are high in phosphoric acid that can really make that transition beautiful. So if you know your plants are going to start, um, like lychee for instance, is like going to start flowering in May, I think, maybe even before that, April, May. Flowering now. Hearts are flowering now. Okay, so if they're starting to flower now, what you can do is you can make fermented plant juice from unripe fruits, and you can start to spray that on, and this creates like a sour thing, and this will really help. So you have this all this huge growth for sunlight, you start to spray this on, and it'll really ease this morning sickness type of thing, and the plant will experience that. So ferment un unripe fruits and spray it on now when it's starting to flower, and, this, and then your flowers won't just fall off flowers will stay and then they'll set and then they'll turn into fruit and that's this morning sickness is the is the most crucial part for plants uh, it, it can be any any unripe fruit you can use um, it's best if you use you know like unripe lychee and lychee kind of thing but but it could be any fruit um, yeah Make a fermented plant juice from it, and this no, will really it's not help. FFJ. Right. Mm -hmm. No, because you're saying unripe fruits. I'm just curious. Is you use the leaves from the unripe? Fruit? No, no, from the unripe fruit. fruit. So use the fruit itself. Typically, when you're making a fermented fruit juice, you're using like three different types of fruit, making it all fancy like that. This one, just just use the unripe fruit and ferment it. It would be FFJ. I don't want to get too technical. <laughs> you guys know what I'm talking about, right? Like, take some unripe fruit, like, go whack down a banana that's not ripe, and cut it up, and then make a fermented plant juice out of it. Okay, so, and then you do that as it's beginning to flower? Or as it's beginning to set the fruit? Right, right now, as it like, so imagine, imagine morning sickness. Like, uh, you're usually not, uh, you're usually just starting to get pregnant, and so that's the time that these sour foods. And this, this will also work for women that you know that are having. If you feed them sour food that are high in phosphoric acid, it'll really relieve this problem. For them. Um, so. Um, and this kind of is a crossover period. Like this is where it's, um, like th this was the crossover period that I was talking about. Like you see how this one has that circle around it? This time is um, the flowers coming out. This is when you can put sour things on it. But your crossover period is right when this is happening, where the fruit's actually starting to form. It's, it's actually crossing over at this period right here. Um, it's, it's not just when the flower comes out, although the flower, when it's coming out, that's the time to put um, calfos on this. <coughs> but this is your crossover period. The most, because this, this, a lot of times, this will then, if it's not ready, this will fall off. You know, this will never set, this will just fall off. But if you provide that nutrient to it, it it'll help. Um, this was a lychee. Uh, you can see it, it's, it's like, it's not when the flowers are out, it's when they actually set into fruits. Mm -hmm. See the little clusters of fruits. I think that's the most important time. Um, but this is the basic way for a collo to use this. It is basically, you start in the beginning and you do a seed soak with your hoolies. And I think each of these divisions is weeks. That's how I did it. And when you first start, you put your hoolie out, and then the first thing you want to do is start applying your, your leaf growth. So every, every the first four weeks, you're going to do leaf growth on it. Then you're going to start alternating the, the root and structure growth with the leaf. So every other week, you're spraying, um, one is with um, calfos, the other is with fish amino acid, and you're balancing those. 
And what that's going to cause the plant to do is to not only grow big leaves and not overgrow, but it's also going to let it put in structure and build roots into it. So you're alternating these all the way through. And then once you notice the plant gets to this point where it starts to shrink and it's starting to get ripe and it's starting to shrink down, then instead of alternating the leaf, because you no longer really want to grow leaves anymore, you're then going to start alternating the fruit spray. So this is your calcium with your calcium phosphate. And you're going to alternate those until you're done. So does that make sense? In, in terms of like how to alternate these things and how to grow. Um, Kala was one example. This other one is a fruit tree. Similar, a little bit longer of leaf growth into it. And then when you notice your plant is beginning to flower um, using twice the flower and then a little of the leaf. Twice the flower, a little of the leaf. Uh, and then once your fruits appear, you're using the calcium and a little bit of the help loss and once in a while throw in some leaf in there. And so essentially by seeing this, noticing what's happening in your plant and alternating those, um, this is pretty safe all the way through. And this is then when you're, instead of just using the maintenance spray, you can actually guide your plant through these transitions. Um, and then this one is like a little bit of for the lettuce. So you can seed soak it, use the leaf, use a little, one time of the water, uh, calcium phosphate, and then mostly leaf. But same kind of idea that you know, I'm gonna have an enhanced right there. And so again, here's that table that I put up here. And I guess the main difference is that in the enhanced ripening, you're going to include seawater as well. Um, and when you include that seawater in there, that really helps to add extra minerals into it. And those extra minerals really make your fruit super sweet. Um, main thing is don't use the lactic acid bacteria when it's about to harvest. It'll be the opposite. are those little small things that fall on the side. Yeah, it's actually eating the stem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the stem you want to get really big and then as it shrinks down that stem will start to swell. So as you're, I, when kalo is ripe, the thing should be really short. It may grow as tall as, you know, eight feet tall, but then it'll shrink down and then it's in the, the root itself. Yeah, so, so what I've been doing is I've been making these, like, um, these mixes here. Like, primarily what I do is I make a maintenance spray mix. So it has the OHN, the BRV, and the FPJ in it. And I mix this together. And I pre-mix this so that that way then I only have to add a little shot of FAA or water-soluble calcium or calphos into it. You can make, you can actually pre-mix this whole mix if you want. The only thing don't mix in is the lactic acid bacteria into them because it'll go nuts and it'll explode. Um, and you don't want to keep lacto in that type of thing. So don't pre-mix the lacto into any of these, but pretty much the rest of them you can pre-mix. And so you can have your pre-mixes already ready to go and um, so for, in, for, for me, this one is um, 20 milliliters per gallon. Yeah, that I mix in. So I just, every, for every gallon, I just put 20 milliliters in. And then I add a little bit of 
um, Laffe or these. And, and I find that's the easiest way because otherwise you have a whole bunch of little bottles that you're always trying to mess with versus if I just have my maintenance spray already mixed in here, then it's really easy. Just add the right amount of maintenance spray and then add a little lacto in and, um, and then my growth nutrients. Is it, is it important to keep it covered? Once you, once you like if you make a five gallon bucket, let's say you four gallons in a five gallon bucket, should you put the lid on or not? So when I'm talking about pre mixing this, I'm talking about pre mixing the concentrates. I'm not talking about uh, pre mixing it into my water. Not yet into the water yet. No. If you mix it once you mix it into the water, it's gonna get active and then it'll get putrid really like within like a day or two. Okay. What I am talking about is mixing the concentrates together. Okay. Yeah. So if you have these three pre-mixed, it um, should be good to go. So you, you like to use a quarter of a PJ, a quarter of PRB, and half a quart of OHM together and keep it. Yeah. You just use 20 milliliters out of that and water. Yeah. And so, and so what, I, what I actually do is I add one part of this, or no, excuse me, I add one part of this and two parts and two parts. So I just add them in and then I just then I just pour off, I sh you know, shake it and pour off 20 milliliters, and then I know I'm in the correct ratio. So it, it makes it super easy to have those pre-mixed. And in, in my school classroom, we do have, we just have one that we call Connie Viola, which is just this pre-mixed already. And then the kids know they put 20 milliliters in, add it to the watering can, and they're good to go. Seed soaking time. What is uh, what is some of your nuances uh, observations over time? Uh, it, it depends on how fast your seed is going to uh, sprout. Things like beans that sprout pretty fast, you can soak them for like 15 minutes, half hour, something like that. Um, things that take a really long time to sprout, um, you can soak them much longer, uh, up to like six hours. I think. But the, the main thing you're trying to think about is, is to have those microbes start to kind of penetrate into the seed as it starts to soften a little bit. And then the, so when your seed sprouts, it's going to be covered in those microbes. So you're not just putting it in and dipping it for like a few seconds. You want to dip it for at least like 15 minutes to up to a few hours. And then it'll really penetrate in. so that he knows it's going to go in roughly these types of dilutions. He puts the concentrates in one tub. He might even dilute it like two, three times in, into it so that he knows it's going to be about the correct thing. Um, then he'll turn it on, run his irrigation, and then, then he turns off the um, siphon to his fertigation mix and then runs water for about the next 10 minutes and then he's done. So he'll, he'll fertigate and then he'll kind of flush it out. And if you have um, kind of buildup, you can add um, lacto, lactic acid bacteria into your fertigation and it, it'll probably eat out um, um, stuff that's causing clogs. So you're saying that there's like a reservoir that concentrates where it might be water now? Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure what he does is he, he, um, he dilutes it like one to four initially in, into his tank and then that then he cracks the valve so it goes, like once his irrigation is running then he opens that valve and it just kind of sucks it through the lines. 
um, and it works really well for him. And he, yeah, he's growing hollow mostly that way. Uh, this, by the way, just the maintenance spray, super delicious. <laughs> like using the vinegar with the OHN and the FPJs, oh man, that's like a salad dressing all, all by itself. <laughs> yeah. I always see the kids, they're always like dipping their hands in them. <laughs> One more question. Um, I'm just about to check something out. About 15 minutes. 15? Yeah, that, that enables the, um, the microbes to kind of go and connect and get on there. Um, also, any um, when you're transplanting, sometimes uh, there will be dirt and residual stuff. And uh, Master Choke kind of recommends like almost like bare rooting it before you're transferring it. And because he describes it as that in the beginning, well, he describes it as like a woman getting married to another guy. <laughs> Um, that if you're like not, you need that transition in the environment. If you come from too rich of a thing and you go into a poor environment, um, then it's, it's very difficult for you to transition. But taking it out of that environment, soaking it in these nutrients, and then transplanting it, it kind of gives the plant like a fresh start to like start new and in that 15 minutes, the plant also soaked up a whole bunch of those nutrients. So when he transplants, he denies them water for up to 24 to 72 hours before so that they're already thirsty. So then when he dips them in for that 15 minutes, that they'll soak up all the FPJ and all the, the whole, um, you know, all this good stuff here. Soak it up and then when you transplant it, it's already like loaded. So it's the same solution, so it's a solution of the same Yeah, this is uh, seed preparation and transplant. And transplant, okay. Yeah. It's a little outside of the natural farming, but whenever I transplant, I always use a, like a flower essence of rescue remedy. Rescue remedy? Yeah, rescue remedy. And I transplant the things that people say you can't that's like some essential oils. No, it's just the flower of remedies. Like you could just go and get a bot flower rescue remedy at the health food store. And it's maybe better ones, but um, yeah, it's like a rescue remedy for, yeah, for like a trauma. So it does really, and I've been using it. Cool. Yeah. So, so I guess you know, include include those things in there, but uh, yeah, just in general, nutrients and all that, like. So if you don't have everything. Um, the reason to put WCP in there is it, it helps to kind of harden it up a little bit. Um, but if you don't have it, it's it's okay because this this is um, the, the fish amino acid kind of acts as like the gasoline or fuel. Um, I put what there, but. I would change it to say fuel actually. And then the WCP acts as um, kind of to help it harden a little bit. Um, so if you don't have some of those things, that's fine. Uh, the, again, the, the general thing in all this is the maintenance spray, which is the top three the maintenance solution. Yeah, Jeremiah's gonna bring some here. And also, um, the LAB is, is pretty, is if you can include that in this seed soap, um, that's, that's really essential.
the lactic acid bacteria is really going to help everything. So, there are the emergency workers. Right on. So, uh, yeah, next next week, uh, Jeremiah will be here with the amino acid for the Hawaii Farmers Union, and I think I'll also be doing a demonstration on uh, fermented plant juice. And I um, wanted to remind you guys here, I think everybody knows, though, uh, Master Cho is going to come. Um, so, if um, you want to help spread the word, get, get the right people there, that would be, I'd appreciate that. And, um, should be a really fun time. Already, uh, 23 people already signed up, so more than 50. So yeah, we only have 100 seats, so <laughs> yeah. we're quite a lot. Uh, it is. It's going to be. It's going to be here. It starts at 6:30. Yeah. Uh, it'll be $10 for the pop.